Lightroom is often kind of ubiquitous with modern photography, right? Like it's just seen as that if you're taking photos, you're going to be using Lightroom. But there's a lot of editing and organizational tools out there. I mean, whether it's because you've got qualms with Adobe's practices or you just hate subscription-based software, there's a lot of reasons to go out and choose another editing platform. So welcome to the start of a series I'm calling Lightroom Alternative. Essentially, I'm going to look at different photo editing and organizational tools and rate them in three categories. Photo organization, photo editing, and value for money. So let's get stuck in with what is gonna be kind of an unorthodox entry into the series, Apple Photos. It's included in any Apple device you get nowadays. It was released back in 2014 as an alternative to the Camera Roll app and the Aperture app on desktop. Now I'm gonna talk about Aperture a bit at the end of this video. Let's get stuck in and import some photos. Importing is simple enough. I just put an SD card in, it detects it, and I can click on the card to see the images that are on it. You can choose to import them to your library in general or bring them into a specific album. You can delete your images on the card after importing don't recommend doing that have a copy just in case and you can even choose to import select images or all images on the card now in lightroom what i really like to do for organizing my photos is to use the star system so you know you've got one two three four and five stars and you can give them all different meanings here besides albums we really only have favorites so you can favorite an image or unfavorite it. To add an image to an album, you can either right click and then add it to the album, or you can just click and drag it across. Kind of handy, fairly intuitive. And if you're a fan of keywords, you can add keywords to an image by pressing get info or command I. With the search bar at the top, you can search for specific cameras. So I could search for all images taken with my GX8. Unlike Lightroom, you can't search for lens metadata. I couldn't search 25 millimeters and just find every image taken with my 25 mil prime. Uh, it'll detect people and pets, which is, I, I feel, aimed more at people who just use this as a way to view their images on their phone. And if you shoot with location information enabled, so if you're shooting with a drone, it's got GPS, or if you shoot tethered to your phone and use that for like GPS data, uh, you can view your images on a map, which again, definitely aimed at people more that are just shooting with their phone. But it's kind of a fun way to view your images sometimes just go and see where you take the most images and also here on the left we can view our favorited images recents imports and a pretty cool option actually is to view duplicates and when you view this on desktop you can see the size of each image under it so you can make sure that if you're deleting copy you can keep the copy with the most detail and lastly on organization you can keep all your files locally on your desktop phone or ipad or you have an option of seeking them with your icloud account now, by default, when you have an Apple ID, you get five gigabytes of free cloud storage, but upgrades to that are fairly cheap as well. Editing. So there's three editing modes, if you will. Uh, you have one click auto enhance, which it's handy for a quick fix. If your image is obviously slightly under or overexposed, you can just press this and it does a good enough job kind of fixing everything. And then if you actually click into edit, you have what I call simplified mode, where you have one slider for light, one slider for color. And You'll notice it's not just increasing the exposure or decreasing the exposure, it's actually changing the contrast and shadows and all that kind of stuff. But if you want more granular editing, you can click this drop down menu and then you can get much more fine control over different elements. So you can actually change your contrast, but not touch your general exposure value. And if you have a look further down here, we have even more specific options like noise reduction. We even have a retouch tool, which it's not amazing, but it can definitely remove a fence post or a few spots on someone's face if you need to. We have a crop option here and you can crop to your heart's content. There's preset uh, aspect ratio, so three by four, four by five, one by one, that kind of stuff. And you can rotate and I believe you you can even do some like basic skewing and warping and that kind of stuff. And here we have filters. Now these don't actually change the values that you put in when editing your image. This is literally just like a filter over put onto it. And you can choose whether you want this filter to be 100% or 0% or anything in between, but that's it. We don't have any presets. Uh, and that's kind of disappointing, but I also get it. It's not what this is aimed at. But I mean, even if you don't use presets to have a specific look for your images, they are quite handy if you're batch editing 100 images from the same event and you want to just copy and paste all your edits onto all the other images. You can't do HDR merging or panoramic merging. So editing here isn't super in depth. Like for me in Lightroom, I have my own presets. I like to be able to merge photos like panoramas and HDRs. And I like being able to copy and paste edits to different images. It just really speeds up the workflow and means that your images can look consistent. But if you're shooting, like let's say with the Fuji system where you have your kind of looks baked into your image, you know, the film simulations, or if you just like the in-camera profiles and you shoot JPEGs, it's a all right way of doing a very quick exposure correction or red eye removal or something like that. So let's talk value. It's free, but it's free if you own an Apple device and they're definitely not free. Keep your files local. You won't have to upgrade your cloud storage. 
but when you consider raw files get pretty big, if you are keeping files on the cloud, then five gigabytes will fill up pretty fast. So you might want to consider an upgrade. The upgrades for this cloud storage are pretty cheap and you can use it for more than just photos. And there's even a few other options like the like hiding your email and signing up for stuff and all that through iCloud. I have a Mac desktop I got for music production. So I already had this app essentially. I definitely wouldn't recommend just buying an Apple device just for the photos app. But if you have one, you know, give it a whirl. So let's rank them. How this is going to work is each category is going to get rated out of five. So we have a true middle at three. And then at the end, I'll add all the numbers together and we have a rough ranking for this. Organization is going to get a three out of five. What would bump it up for me is being able to search for more metadata in the image with the search bar and having not even necessarily the star rating system, but being able to just organize my photos a bit more than I currently can. But what we do have honestly is quite usable and I think I could definitely live with this if I had to. It's not terrible, at least we have albums and stuff like that. So it's getting a three. Editing, I'm kind of torn between whether a two or a three here. I'm gonna give it a three just because like if you're editing an individual image, it's fine. I think if you're taking images for your own leisure and just wanna do a quick exposure correction or a little bit of a crop, then what you have here is genuinely fine. There's no option for presets, and if we had that, then I'd be quite happy, to be honest. Um, but I mean, technically it is all right for editing, so it's gonna get three out of five. So value for money. Uh, I mean, it's free, so I'm gonna have to give it a five out of five. And yeah, you have to pay for the extra cloud storage, but I mean, that's kind of true for cloud storage anyway, right? You can keep your files locally if you don't wanna do that. Considering that you can import raw files, then quite a lot of free photo applications don't allow you to edit raw files. You go and import a raw file and it just kind of converts it into a JPEG, which you then edit, so you're losing a bunch of rain. So I mentioned I was gonna discuss Aperture before. So this was a program that got discontinued, I wanna say in about 2014, and it was very much a Lightroom alternative. Uh, I remember messing around with it back in the day on like my very old MacBook and it truly felt like a more professional application than this. It's also only a 32-bit application so if you manage to find a copy of an older version it just won't run on a newer Mac. Uh, I'm surprised Apple haven't released an upgrade to this. So for anyone that doesn't know, Apple kind of have two professional apps that they have in the media space, right? So for music production you've got Logic Pro and for video editing you've got Final Cut Pro. Both of these applications have a free version that is included when you get a phone or an iPad or a Mac, which is GarageBand and iMovie. I think we should maybe consider having a third Pro app, Aperture Pro. I don't know if that's what they end up calling it. Bring back all the tools we had in Aperture, add you know a few other features or whatever, and have it so we can use our iCloud storage as kind of how Adobe have their creative cloud. All in all, with Apple Photos, like it's grand in a pinch and considering it's free there's no reason to not try it out i think if you own an apple device and you're looking for something to maybe edit a few images while you're out and about i'd give it a try there's a few other pieces of software i want to check out for the series dark table is probably going to be the next one because it's open source and you can get it on pretty much any platform so stick around if that's something you want to see and if there's any other software in particular you want me to have a look at, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and get to it. I'm not sure what format this series is going to take ultimately. In my head, I was kind of picturing like capturing my webcam while I'm at the computer, but I think that's kind of messy and like it just leads to a rambly video. So um, we'll see how it evolves. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.